Oh, I found one. <laughs> he literally is right in front of me. Look at him. That's so cool. Estereano Grande State Park is a famous world birding center in South Texas. The park boasts a total of around 340 bird species and has trails that go through wetlands, thorn scrub, woodlands, and more, as well as photography blinds. The park is open from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. daily with a small entrance fee, and binoculars can also be rented for a small fee. Today, we're birding the park with local birder Justin LeClaire from the Coastal Bend Bays and Estuaries program and started our walk at the overlook of the Ibis Pond. Hey everyone, this is Ryan and Derek from Badgerland Birding. We are here in South Texas in the Rio Grande Valley at one of the premier birding destinations, Estero State Park. And this is a beautiful place so far that I've never been to, Derek's been to once. We're hoping to get some of the South Texas specialty birds here that we haven't already gotten. Yeah, it's a really awesome place with different habitats, so really excited to check it out. We got our friend Justin here too. He's a uh, a local, so excited to see what he can teach us about this place, too. It didn't take long for us to realize the pond was loaded with a variety of different birds. What do you think? This place is crazy. This is like some of the first water I've seen that's like an actual standing pond. And there's avocets, and there's stilts in there, and there's a lot of ducks. So we gotta figure out what's all in here, but it looks really cool. We picked through the birds of the pond and found a variety of different species. Wow, that's a good view. From the Ibis Pond, we walked a trail past the Dowitcher Pond, adding more new species to our list for the day, including a beautiful roseate spoonbill. We turned a corner toward Alligator Lake, and I asked Justin about his thoughts on birding at Estero. So would you say Estero is one of the best places in South Texas to bird? It's probably one of the places that you can most easily get a huge list yeah for sure um, you can get 100 plus here um, especially during migration so it's just got a really nice diversity of habitats and it, lots of easy walking paths at the lake we added more new species for the trip many of which looked rather cold on this overcast texas day Near this part of the trail, locals know about a unique bird species that blends in extremely well with its environment, the common parake. Sticks are placed near the side of the trail to make sure visitors don't accidentally disturb these well-camouflaged birds. With Ryan never having seen them before, we made it his job to try and spot the first one. You definitely have to just walk up and try to find them on your own. Okay. Um, <laughs> there were three last time I was here, so you've got a lot of options here. So just like that general area? Yeah, yeah, just behind the brush and move slow and look for a stick that's not a stick. All right, let's play the Paraki game. <laughs> I know one particular subscriber that's going to enjoy that game. I'm going to find one of those Paraki. Uh, how deep in are they normally? They can be right in front of you, so... Oh, gosh. I found one. He literally is right in front of me. Look at him. That's so cool. He's big. He's yeah, a chunk. So the common parake is perfectly camouflaged to blend in with sticks and leaf litter on the ground, where they can be seen resting during the day and normally return to the same roosting spot. Common parakes are insectivores that feed and call at night. It can be found in parts of South America, Central America, the tropics, and South Texas. Nests are made on the ground, often under bushes. That's a fantastic bird. I'm so excited we got that one. It's just such a unique thing to have a bird that looks that much like a stick. And we get things like nighthawks and whippoorwills, but you don't usually even get to see those during the day. So to see this one just out here is amazing. That camouflage is incredible. 
like it, the colors of the feathers just blended with the different sticks so well. So it's that's an awesome bird to get, especially during the day. Right off the trail. So are they known for that, just being that still? Oh yeah, yeah, they'll sit like that all day unless something spooks them up. Um, and then at night they'll come out and they'll be more likely to sit out in the middle and they'll go off and grab bugs and they'll land back in the middle and do their classic calls. Why are they so okay with just being out? <laughs> Here? I guess they're just used to people walking by every day. Um, the park has these sticks lined up so that nobody walks in there and yeah, it's, it's a little bit of a surprise. What do you think of the parake? They're awesome. We have the two. Dos parakes. Dos. It's kind of like when you're trying to film though, it's like, that's that's all I'm gonna get. So like, do I take a picture? Do I keep recording? What do I do? No, I got his feathers moving in the wind. That's, that's nice. It's like the like shampoo commercial. After enjoying our parake views, we stopped at an overlook of Alligator Lake, spotting some neotropic cormorants, a belted kingfisher, great blue heron, and some raptors. There's um, a white-tailed hawk way back there, flying over, just over the power line. Just swoop right. From the overlook, we walked to the levee, where we had a great view of Llano Grande Lake, and Justin spotted another bird that was a lifer for Ryan, the white-tailed kite. The white-tailed kite is a magnificent species that can be found in select areas of North, Central, and South America. They are at home in savannas and other open areas, and are known for their hovering behavior, which is known as kiting. Adult birds are gray above, with black wrist spots, dark shoulders, and a mostly white underside. White-tailed kites feed mostly on small mammals, but will also prey on other small vertebrates or even insects. Just got a white-tailed kite over here, Justin pointed it out, it's at the top of this bush. It's a life bird for me, so that's exciting. So we've got parake, and then we have this one at a cerro, which is so cool. And then there's a bunch of waterfowl down there with a few more shorebirds, like more abyssides and more stilts too. So a really neat place. From the levee, we were able to spot a large flock of white pelicans, as well as a flock of white ibises, some western meadowlarks, a perched northern harrier, and more. We walked down the levee towards the tropical zone and noted an interesting tree along the way. So that's Texas ebony. So this was what the kites were in and Justin said that a lot of birds nest in this because mammals don't want to deal with the spines. So it's a great tree for birds to nest in. We continued walking towards the tropical zone, spotting a blue-gray gnat catcher and black-crested titmouse, as well as a brightly colored Altamira oriole. This area normally hosts a variety of rare birds such as rose-throated bacards and tropical perulas, but this year had been surprisingly quiet. Being back in the tropical zone also brought back some bad memories from a previous trip chasing a rarity. So we've entered the tropical zone, and last time I was here, me and my friend looked for this trogan that had been seen earlier in the morning and we didn't have it and it was just like this it was like our last day and it was this um, kind of debacle because like it was given great views earlier but we decided not to go first thing in the morning so it's crazy to be back in that same place but you know we've had a much better day with uh, the stuff we've seen today than we did that time trying to find that trogan but brings back the memories we briefly stopped to check out the indigo blind spotting a bright red northern cardinal and a ladder-backed woodpecker before finishing our loop around Estero. So if someone was visiting, what kind of route do you think they should take if they're not going for anything in particular? At Estero? Yeah. I would definitely say do kind of what we did. So you go and hang out at the deck, and then you do a big loop around the park. So you can go and try to find parakis, um, look for a couple alligators, um, and check up the levee. Just make the run through all the ponds, and then you've got the, the nice tropical zone to, to make a loop through afterwards as well. Um, usually there's some fun things here in the winter. All in all, Asteriano Grande State Park is a must-see destination if you're in the Rio Grande Valley. Whether it's due to chasing a rare bird, searching for parakes, or just looking for a high diversity of species, a stop at this destination is sure to not disappoint. Have you ever birded here before? Let us know in the comments below, and thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on Badgerland Birding. Yeah.